Around the world in 80 days, the journey begins. Chapter 3 Phileas Fogg, five whist opponents, all looked at each other, nodded, and said unanimously, We accept. Mr. Fogg's wager to travel around the world in 80 days was on. Good, said Phileas Fogg. The train leaves for Dover at a quarter before nine. I will take it. This very evening? One of the men said. Yes, this very evening, said, F- said Mr. Fogg. He, then, he then took out his pocket a manic and added, Today is Wednesday, October 2. I shall be due in London in this very room at the, re- at the, at the Reform Club on Saturday, December 21. 21st, at a quarter before 9 p.m. If I am late, twenty thousand pounds now deposit in my name at Baring's back will belong to you. Then Mr. Fogg pulled out his checkbook and signed a check with his fountain pen. In fact, gentlemen, he said, there is a check for the amount. The man drafted a contract outlining the the wager, and everyone signed it. During the whole exchange, Phileas Fogg maintained his usual cool composure. He had not bet to win, but merely to live up to his word. He had staked twenty thousand pounds, half his fortune. He thought he might have to spend the other half to carry out this difficult project. The clock struck seven, and the group agreed to suspend the game so Mr. Fogg could prepare for his departure. It is unnecessary, gentlemen. I am quite ready now, was Mr. F- was Mr. Fox rep- remarks. It is your turn, I believe, he said to his men on his left. So after winning twenty guineas at whist and taking leave of his friends, Phileas Fogg, at twenty-five minutes past seven, left the reform club and made his way home. When Mr. Fogg arrived home, Passapart too was surprised. His master was not due in, until mid, exactly midnight. Mr. Fogg immediately went to his room and called for his servant. But Passepartout did not reply. Mr. Fogg could not be calling for him. It was not the right hour. Passepartout, repeated Mr. Fogg, without raising his voice. Passepartout arrived. I've called you twice, said his master. But it is not midnight, said Passepartout, showing Mr. Fogg his watch. I know that. I don't blame you. But we start for Dover and Calais in ten minutes, said Mr. Fogg. You are going to leave home? asked Passepartout with a puzzled look on his face. Yes, says, says his master. We are going around the world. Passepartout opened his eyes wide and looked like he might collapse. Around the world, he murmured. In eighty days? In eighty days, replied Mr. Fogg. So we haven't a moment to lose. But I must pack out. Our trunks, Passepartout said. We will have no trunks, only a carpet bag with two shirts and three pairs of socks for me, and the same for you. We will buy our clothes on the way, said Mr. Fogg. Passepartout tried to reply, but he but couldn't. He left Mr. Fogg's room, climbed the stairs to his own room, and fell into the closest chair. What his master? A fool? No. Was this a joke? It didn't seem so. They were going to Dover and then to Calais in France. Passepartout thought of a moment later. After all, Passepartout had been away from France for five years. He would not be sorry to see his native soil. Again, remembering there was no time to waste, Passepartout packed the carpet bag and was ready by eight o'clock. Mr. Fogg was ready as well. He was carrying a railway up. A steamer timetable under his arm. He took the carpet bag, opened it, and slid a huge roll of bank, bank notes inside it. You have forgotten nothing? He asked Passepartout. No, but no, nothing, sir, replied Passepartout. Good. Take this carpet bag, Mr. Fogg said, handing it to Passepartout. Take good care of it, because there is twenty thousand pounds in it. Passepartout nearly dropped the bag as if the 20,000 pounds were as heavy as gold. 
Mr. Fox and Pastor Patul then left the house, locked the door securely, and took a cab to Charing Cross railway station. The cab stopped in front of the station at 8.25, exactly 25 minutes before the train was to depart. Pastor Patul's guidebook. Oh my, I thought I would be settling down for a nice quiet life, but suddenly I found out I was about to travel around the world, and, I, and in 80 days, Mr. Fogg told me that our trip would start in Dover, located at the southeast tip of England. Dover is famous for its tall white cliffs, which are made of pure white chalk. In fact, these white cliffs give England its most ancient name, Albion, which means white. Dover is one of the busiest places to cross the England Channel. Traffic through this port town has boomed since the railway connected to London. People travelling on the London Dover train can take 21 miles ferry ride across the England Channel to Calais, France. There, 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 there they can hop on the Calais Paris train. So far, our journey around the world sounds easy, right? Well, see what happens next.